So you've been given a task to make a few welds on some galvanized steel. It's your first time doing it and you're having a miserable time. There's spatter everywhere, the arc is erratic, and the weld puddle doesn't seem to want to stick to anything. Hey guys, my name is Edgar and today I'm going to be welding on some galvanized steel. I'm going to be using several different welding processes to show you which one is best suited for this task. I will get it done using different levels of base metal preparation from shiny metal to straight up full on galvanized steel. So let's get started. Here's the material I'm going to be using. This is 2x2 carbon steel angle iron that has gone through the hot dip galvanizing process. I'm simply going to cut one leg off and tack them up so we're left with a lap joint. Now, before I start welding, I do want to point out the obvious. I do not recommend welding directly on galvanized material. And if you do happen to be welding on this stuff, make sure that you're in a well ventilated area, like outside, or have a fan blowing the fumes and smoke away from you. Inhaling these fumes can get you sick and get you galvanized poisoning. And the last thing I want to mention is that our weld quality will always be higher when welding on clean shiny metal. And this is where we'll start off, our first and only coupon that has been ground and clean down to shiny metal. The center of the bottom plate has been ground down and the top plate has been ground down one inch on both sides close to the weld zone to include that quarter inch side of the plate. Now for this first one I wanted to use a welding process that is commonly used in the field. So I decided to go with SMAW also known as stick welding. I'm using a 1 8 7018 at approximately 140 amps. Let's listen to it for a second so we can use this as a baseline. And as expected, we get an acceptable weld. Nothing crazy or out of the ordinary. So now let's move on to the next coupon. We have the same rod, the same amperage. However, we didn't do any base metal preparation. And I know some of you guys watching are saying, Edgar, I will never be in that scenario. I will always grind it down to bare metal. And I'm with you guys, trust me. However, these tests will show us which process is best in the worst case scenario. Let's hear how this sounds. Sounds awful, right? If you are in this scenario, without a grinder, you can remove some of the galvanize by trying to burn some of it off. With your electrode, sort of hover over the weld zone, letting the arc burn some of it off. This will make a mess, but the arc will be a bit more stable when welding over all this stuff. Here's a shot directly after welding. It made a huge mess. And here's what it looks like after cleaning it up with a wire wheel. It is nasty. Now for this test or coupon, I wanted to increase the weld size and pretty it up a little bit. So I ran two beads over the first one and it went way smoother. Take a listen. The main reason it ran better was because we pretty much burned away most of the galvanized material. Here's the result. Let's move over to our next test. And the rest of these will go much faster so we can keep it short but still be able to see and hear all the processes. We have a 1 8 60 10 at approximately 95 amps. Let's have a listen. Now to me, it ran a little bit smoother than a first pass with a 7018. And I believe it's due to the whipping of the electrode. When we whip away from the puddle, it's actually burning the galvanize ahead of the puddle. This did leave a massive hole at the termination of the weld. It almost looked like some of the fumes were escaping through here. Here's our finished weld all cleaned up. Our next coupon, I did a 1 8 6010 root pass at 95 amps and put a 2 bead cap using a 1 8 7018 at approximately 140 amps. Let's listen to the first 7018 pass go over the 6010. It was a little bit more pleasant than welding over the 7018 root pass, but still doesn't beat a clean shiny metal. Here's a result. Alright, the next three processes I have zero experience with on galvanized material, so let's get to it. We're going to mig weld this one using 030 ER7S6 wire and 7525 shielding gas. I will set the machine to 24 volts and 564 wire feed speed. Let's have a listen. It was a complete disaster. I couldn't finish the coupon due to so much spatter buildup in the nozzle. Having only welded about an inch, it still managed to damage the nozzle and diffuser. 
After removing the nozzle buildup, I tried again, but this time I ground down the weld zone to shiny metal, which still didn't help because it drew in the galvanize between the two plates. Here are the results. And on to the next one. Here we will use the flux core arc welding process that is gas shielded, also known as dual shield flux core or gas shielded flux core. I will be using 035 wire with 7525 shielding gas and I'll set the machine to 23 volts and 580 wire feed speed. Let's have a listen. It was a pretty similar outcome to MIG welding with solid wire and didn't finish due to the spatter buildup. Here's the result. Now in the last disc coupon, we will use the flux core arc welding process that is self shielded. No shielding gas is needed for this process. Since the last two processes were a disaster, I decided to do a little bit of base metal prep. I ground out the weld zone after tacking. Remember, there's still a possibility to draw in the galvanized between the two plates while welding. Let's have a listen. All I could say is wow. It was a huge difference. And it's not a bad looking weld, even if it's been over five years since I touched this process. And here's how it looks after hitting it up with a wire wheel. After I finished recording this last test, I felt like I cheated on the self-shielded flux core coupon, so I decided to do another test run on fully galvanized steel like the others. And it welded identical to the last coupon. It looks a little bit different because I tried to get high speed low drag and add some gun manipulation to widen the weld, but other than that, it's identical. If I had to use a MIG gun to weld a similar joint, I would definitely throw some self-shielded flux core wire in there. And if I had to stick welded, I would probably use 6010 as a first pass, then 7018 the rest. Well guys, that's the end of this video. Hopefully you picked up a few tips that will help you accomplish a similar task. Thanks for watching, stay safe, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.